and evening came and morning came. The morning began just as any other. We were on our way to school. Since it was only the closing ceremony today, we didn't need to take as many things along. And so we left a little earlier than usual with no need to rush. Today was the final day the three of us would walk this path to school together. However, there was no air of sadness anywhere to be found. Didi wanted it to be that way, but that wasn't the reason why. Michido and I were both struggling not to smile. And Crow, who'd had nothing to do with all the work we'd put in, floated around in midair with a gigantic smirk. Didi ended up being kind of confused by that, so I ended up with that additional unneeded monkey on my back. It wasn't every day Crow was actually accompanying us on the ride to school after all. The party after we are done, of course. Lots of good food to be had there. You could always try making it yourself. Yeah, I can empathize with that. We continued casually conversing like that as we entered the classroom, greeting all our classmates. Following that, Didi explained her circumstances to everyone, and from then until the conclusion of the closing ceremony, things played out as they would. And then... <laughs> Didi mumbled, her body trembling with slight nervousness as we walked the path home together. She seemed out of it at that moment, but she was still pretty sharp. Guess I'll have to buy myself some time. Is your sixth sense awakening or something? Were you expecting everyone to be sad about you leaving? Sorry about that. We've all been so busy lately, we didn't really have the time to say our farewells. Yeah, true enough. But we have something different in mind for you instead. Come on, at least say it's a nice smile. I suppose you could say it was the kind of a grin reserved for someone watching their prey fall right into their trap. But anyway, Didi... Didi tried to take a step back, but I took her by the hand and turned her the opposite way. There's something I forgot in the classroom, so let's go back. That's a secret. Oh, chill out! No one's gonna get hurt here. Didi got fussy with me as I dragged her back into the school. Come on, you're just nervous. Don't freak out on me here. Well, duh. Hey, I'm doing my damnedest to keep it together here. Oh, no. 
Yeah, I got this. Sorry, you'll find out soon enough. In any case, I had no intent of revealing all to her on the spot. I took her hand once again and gazed at her face to face. As if to hold back my ever-rising nervousness, I took a deep breath again. Didi. I hope you'll enjoy this. Without waiting for her reply, I put my hand on the door to the classroom. The moment we stepped into the classroom, we were greeted by a wave of cheers and applause. The unfamiliar music and the feeling of being in the spotlight like this were deeply moving. And DD being right by my side made it even more so. Like I said, just chill out. We most certainly are. Bewildered by this turn of events, DD slowly tried to back away. So, taking DD along, I moved to the center of the classroom with her. You said you loved me too, didn't you? And you're going back home to the UK, right? So I thought it over with everyone. What kind of event should we hold? What would impress you most of all? What would make you happier more than anything? If I hadn't, you wouldn't have even considered the idea, would you? Given your condition and all, though I really have Makoto and the others to thank for coming up with this. Of course, I felt it wasn't something I had to hide. ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、
I want you to put yourself first, not just other people. I'm glad you did. With all that courage and initiative of yours, I would never have been able to meet you. But why would you settle for just meeting me and leave it at that? If your goal all along was to meet your prospective fiancé, you should see this all the way through to the end. That doesn't even make sense. I can live with that. After all, once you fall in love with someone, little things like that lose all their meaning. Even if your happiness becomes my sadness, that won't matter to me. Well, I can bear even the painful memories of their memories made with you. I want to see you not just when you're happy, but when you cry and when you're angry too. I want to see more and more of you. It had only been a month since Didi came to my house. I could have practically counted the hours we'd spent together, just us two, on my fingers. There were so many things about her I still didn't know. I'm just that kind of guy. I want to tease the girl I love. Besides, no matter what expression you have, you'll always be cute. Of course, I know I said no matter what expression, but you are definitely cutest of all when you are happy. Come on, you're not alone here. I'm trying to keep it together as much as I can too. But I'm much more nervous than I am embarrassed. I mean, this is a wedding with a girl I love and all. I ended up having to hold back the smile I was about to make. She was that worried for me, it made me so happy I could hardly bear it. This was befitting of the DD I fell in love with. Maybe I will be, but much more importantly, if I weren't with you, I would regret that so much more. I don't mind. Until then, I want to be happy with you. Enough so that I'll bawl my damn eyes out when the time comes. I extended my hand invitingly to DD. For a while, she just stared at it. And then she muttered, her voice almost inaudibly quiet. Maybe it will be, but right now, that's all the more reason to spend as much time as we possibly can being happy together. Didi gave no response to that. Rather, her soft hand fell on top of mine. I was seriously on the verge of tearing up, but I managed to hold myself together as we walked toward everyone. Didi and me, together. This is just a mock ceremony, so it's not like we are formally entering you into the family registry. I spoke my thoughts in a voice that was about to crack. And this isn't a place where I can swear to you in the presence of God. I then took out from my pocket a symbol of my affection. But the feelings I have for you are very real. This is real too. It's three months worth of... Well, not income, but my allowance. Sorry about that. There's no one other than you I'd give something like this to. Michiru helped me figure out the size, and both my parents and yours gave their blessings. So there's nothing to worry about.
It is. This is how I truly feel. I slipped the ring onto her finger where it truly belonged. It was a physical manifestation of my feelings for her, and now she had accepted it. Miss Dorothy Davenport. And then it was time to verbalize those feelings. I will love and honor you all the days of my life. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. And I swear to you that when the end does come, you can look back and say that you were happy. So, will you marry me? Hi. A small drop of warmth fell upon our entwined hands. And then, drop by drop, her emotions burst forth. So do I. I want us both to be happy. So, I don't want you to hold back on me, DD. If there is anything you want me to do or say, please tell me. Come on, Ante. Reku to isu ni shitai koto takusan aru desu. Suki da ante zutto iitakatta n desu. Tear drop after tear drop of emotion flowed from her eyes. As if the wall she'd put up to seal away all of her feelings had finally come crumbling down. Her truest desire was laid bare before me. Thank you, I'm so happy. I'll do them all with you. Whatever you want, just say the word and I'll make it happen. It's all right. We just go through them all one at a time. If you're with me, I'll cherish every moment of anything we do. Even while she cried, her smile shone through brightly. It might be difficult to have any sort of ordinary dream granted, for me or for DD. Hence, why we must dream greater than that. The future that lay ahead was not one composed of just painful things. We would not let the sad things overwhelm us. Even if I can't see what lies ahead on my own, if I were together. Together with the DD, then surely, surely we would find happiness. Our every wish could be granted. To have the person I love become my significant other, my fiance. I'm so very happy. Yes, I am happy. I'm so 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 happy. Likewise, I feel so blessed to have met you, Didi, for falling in love with me and coming here to meet me. Thank you. And then the distance between us became reduced to nothing, as if our happiness and our joy had finally brought us together in unity. I'm
時が過ぎ笑い合えるまた思い出へと変わる日々を重ねたくさんの過去よりいままたつむいでく The wedding ceremony ended without incident, and everyone gave their blessings. Having gone through such a moving experience, our bonds deepened even further. Or so I'd like to say, but it became plain to see that not much had changed. Didi didn't return home, instead she stayed here, continuing to work as a maid. Our engagement had already been established prior to this, so that hadn't changed either. If there was anything that did change, it would definitely be how we fed for each other. There, that should do it. I finished planting the apple seedlings and then brushed the dirt off my hands. Given how they were sent here all the way from Didi's own home, I was a lot more nervous than I ought to have been. They were, after all, gifts sent along in commemoration of our marriage. Well, these are seedlings of the kind of trees you took care of, so that's certainly not a reach. Of course, but about you calling me that. Given how things are now, can we just drop the whole master-maid relationship? You could just try to call me by name once in a while at least. Of course, I wasn't objecting to it. But it was also hard to let go of that one and only time she called me sweetheart. Of course, once we've both graduated and her name's been formally added to the family register, it'll be something to look forward to. Don't worry, Desu, Goshujin-sama! Hmm? 
グランパたちが日本に来た時はちゃんと名前で紹介しますから Well, guess I'll have to try and keep it together when you do. The last thing I want to do is look like an idiot in front of my parents. <laughs> Then, when we are alone with each other, I'll spoil you all you want. No holding back. Well, of course, that goes without saying. Huh. Honestly, just when I was wondering what you were going to segue into there. These trees may be part of my memories with you, but all the same, they can't replace you. And besides, even after I die, they are still going to be here. Try not to forget about that. Still, I guess leaving descendants behind is something nice to think about. Well, you said something about fruits of our love a minute ago, so doesn't that make you think about children? Once these seedlings mature into trees, they'll still need people to take care of them. Appreciate your enthusiasm, but let's save that for after graduation. About that survey on your plans for the future, could you not put bride or something on there? I'm serious, but too little too late, eh? Considering I held a mock wedding right in front of everyone, it's probably not my place to worry about that. Fair enough, that does sound like fun. Thinking about your own future isn't a bad thing at all. But if I were to look too far ahead, all the joy before my very eyes right now would go to waste. Crow? I appreciate the offer, but that sounds pretty humiliating. Please don't! I'd be a laughing stock. Or so she seemed to. We still hadn't made a great deal of memories. I wanted to experience more and more joy together with DD. If we're going to leave something for the future, maybe some pictures or videos would be nice too. A time capsule? Sounds good. We can get Michiru and everyone else to help out too. That's a great idea. If you're gonna aim for that, you had better strive to live long and prosper. Exactly! I thought I told you to drop it with the obscure references. Even while we carried on, I felt as though we were both becoming a little more alive. It didn't matter if both our futures were predetermined. We are the masters of our own destinies. To combat and overcome destiny is simply a question of will. Yeah, 
We're gone, my medicine, indeed. The feeling's mutual, of course. I'll do my best. <laughs> As Crow floated in midair, she suddenly craned her head. What's up? Don't ask me, ask Crow. Didi glanced around in confusion. Oh? If she can't see Crow anymore, does that mean she will actually live longer than expected? Step out? Oh, come on, she's right there! また運命が変わったな。Huh? What do you mean, chosen? What? While I remained confused at Crow's words, Didi seemed equally confused by how I was behaving. It seemed as though Didi was no longer able to see or hear Crow. Did that mean... Hey, Crow, you said the course of destiny has changed, didn't you? Oh, it done. Then for who and how has? Nah, on second thought, don't answer that. A grin formed on my face. Hmm? It's nothing, don't worry about it. I answered to Didi, but my words also apply to Crow. I think not knowing what the future holds in store is what makes it all the more fun. It is for that reason that we can imagine what it holds in store. For happiness is such stuff as dreams are made on. DD. Let's strive to be happy together. Fin. What? Unlock? In the title menu, repeat has been unlocked. Chrono Croc! And the title screen changed again! Yeah, there's a new option here. Repeat. And clicking that will lead us to Crow's Root. But first, let's have a look at uh, DD's uh, extra scenes, shall we? It had been a month since the wedding. Word on the street was flying around, of course, but it had finally become clear to everyone at school that Didi and I were in love with each other. We'd sort of become the school's official couple for that reason. Or that's what Misaki told me when she came to visit the other day. Michiru wasn't upset to hear that, if anything, she was pleased. While she didn't directly state so, she did seem to approve of my relationship with Didi. She'd been getting along with Didi at home better too, our future seemed to be one without worries. But honestly, I kinda feel like the odd one out right now. No, it's not about that. I glanced at Michiru and Didi with a look declaring I had something to say. More specifically, I glanced at their entwined hands. I had my hands full with shopping bags while they were walking along holding hands. I know they say three is a crowd and all, but I still feel like the odd one out. If I did that, Didi, I'd really hate myself in the morning. 
Only for you, Didi. <laughs> I s a i t i m s e That's it, Michiru. You seem to be、uh, monopolizing my girlfriend right now. <laughs> I doubt any passers by would see things that way, though. This situation does not look like a date. This looks like some guy who ended up roped into carrying the day's shopping home for two girls at once. Of course, that's exactly what it was. And all the same, it wasn't like I was dissatisfied with things as they were. It was actually kind of fun. I appreciate the offer, but we'll kind of be hogging the street that way, so I'll pass. しし Michiru cast a flirtatious glance in my direction. That statement of hers seemed kind of ominous. But I figured it was better to let sleeping dogs lie and ignore it. I was worried, but maybe I was worrying too much. It was tough to take things in moderation, but I guess I just had to get a little more accustomed to it. While I was mulling this over, Didi stopped in front of a store. Didi shifted her gaze away. Seems she's enticed by the DVD rental place. Wanna go in? Didi san ga dono yona enga o kariru no ka kyomi wa arimasu ne. Enga to ha mata chigao no desu ga. Hm? と言いますか、お嬢様は知っていますよね。<笑>何のことでしょうか。So did I. While the two of them seemed to be in on something, I didn't have a clue what it could be. Porn? Oh, anime perhaps? Nah, if it were actually anime, DD would have said so by now. Spacing out a bit as I thought that, Didi turned to me with a slight look of unease. Nah, go right ahead. I'll come with. Hmm? It's not like we'd mind going in, though. Didi gave a wave of her hand before disappearing into the store. What was all that about? Michiru gave a sly grin as she whispered. She had to be lying, though I couldn't prove that. I kept my gaze focused on Michiru, wondering if she'd give something away. I think she's getting the wrong message. Two of us, my left eye. There's plenty of other people around. Isn't that the sort of thing a younger sister should do for her brother's girlfriend? I suppose so. Guess I can't argue with that. ともあれ、DD さんが借りてきたものは、後ほど本人に確認すれば済む話です。映画でしたら、一緒に鑑賞すればよろしいですし。Yeah, true! You wanna watch it with us, Michiru? 遠慮しておきます。お邪魔ばかりしていては、嫌われてしまいますから。I doubt you would get in the way, though. After all, DD was the one to invite Michiru to come along with me and her. No matter what happens, neither me nor DD will ever neglect you, Michiru. 
そう言っていただけると気が楽になりますね DD さんを調教した甲斐があったというものです Hey Though I let a little bit of exasperation slip I knew Michiru was only trying to conceal her own embarrassment And I knew that they both had a level of trust in each other that was almost too deep to seem ordinary. Michiru's unseeing eyes narrowed. Well, every now and then we do talk a little in my room. What else would there be for us to do? あらこんなところで私に言わせるのですか兄様がお望みとあらば羞恥心をこらえ大声で I'd really rather you didn't I knew full well what she wanted to ask me she wanted to know whether or not we'd had sex yet それでどうなのですか Not yet Even if this was a touchy subject, I didn't want to hide it from Michiru. Well, it's because of her condition. It's just so much to think about. I was pretty sure she wanted to as well, and I figured it'd be alright as long as she didn't push herself too hard. But there wasn't any way to be certain of that. That's exactly why I'm scared she'll try to push herself. Michiru smiled reassuringly at me, her smile laced with the slightest hint of playfulness. I'll keep that in mind. As family and as another girl, Michiru's opinion was important to consider. There is no hurry after all, the more we go on living together, that stuff should just come with the territory. Even if our discussion had been derailed into a weird place, I hadn't thought about it very much myself. Just as our conversation reached a satisfactory conclusion, DD ex exited the store. That was fast. Michiru, didn't you say earlier you didn't know what you wanted to rent? So if Michiru picked out the genre, then Didi would have picked a specific one out herself, huh? Hey Didi, what exactly did you... Hmm. Given Didi's own reaction, I had a hunch she wasn't going to tell me the title right now. I figured it could wait until we returned home. Damn stomach ache! Left on my lonesome in my room, I muttered to myself in a stupor. Mind you, it's not like my dinner was badly done tonight, rather, it was about what DD had rented. The moment we got back home, DD immediately began tending to her maidly duties. At dinner time, I tried to ask her more about it, but she dodged it every time. If memory serves, she'll be finishing her work right about this time. It would normally be right about now when Didi would stop by my room to play games with me. If she wasn't coming by tonight, then maybe she wants to watch it alone. Nah, I guess that can't be it. Maybe she wanted to watch it with Michiru, though the mere thought of that was kind of depressing. What could it be? It's almost like she seriously didn't want me to find out about it this time. Well, in any case, guess I'll just stop by her room to be sure. As I stood up, I could hear an excited pitter-patter of footsteps. There was only one person in this household who'd walk that way. 
bang on time, I see. Yeah, I was just about to go to your room, Didi. It's not exactly your room. I was just thinking maybe we could watch the DVD you rent together. Might I ask why you're backing away like that? Unexpected? As she spoke, Didi produced the case of the DVD in question. If you actually took it here with you, wouldn't that mean you were intending to do that all along? I cocked my head at Didi, who was still dodging the question. But then, noticing the title on the spine of the DVD case, many things became clear. Sister's doing it for herself. Four non-stop hours of tender love and care. S sorry No, wait. There was no way I couldn't be surprised at that. All the same, there was one thing I could be certain about. I should have guessed Michiru would suggest that sort of thing to you. This is Michiru we are talking about. I'm just putting two and two together. I recalled what Michiru had told me back at the DVD shop. She'd suggested a genre, i.e. Little Sisters, to DD, but not a specific title. Though one glance at the title was more than enough to give me an idea of the content. Well, anyway. No use standing around, so go ahead and take a seat. Thank you, Des. Didi flopped down on the floor across from me. Anyway, about this DVD. I pushed the DVD case back to Didi while keeping my eyes off it. I'm not gonna ask why you rented. Damn it, I just said I wasn't going to ask. Oh? Michiru, I wanted to scream at the top of my lungs. What the fuck were you thinking? But that wouldn't have accomplished anything of worth, and I didn't want her to rush out of the room, so I bit my tongue. Hmm? So you brought it with you just in case? Yes, this. So regarding why you came to my room, that means... At my inquisition, Didi gave me a sheepish sort of smile. <laughs> Didi crept forward eagerly, closing the distance between us. I could instantly sense the sweet fragrance of her shampoo. Evidently, she'd already pulled out all the necessary stops. Michiru's words from before flashed through my head. She was expecting this would happen, or more accurately, she incited it to happen. I'd call her meddlesome, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't appreciate the thought. No, not at all. But come on, a night tryst? Isn't there a better term for this sort of thing? That sounds even more extreme. Come on, something more normal, like... How is anything about that sentence normal? Like hell it is! Have a little more faith in your homeland, Limey. I let out a sigh to keep my emotions in check. Okay, serious question here. Are you sure you're ready for this, both physically and mentally? She gave me a confident nod, which was somewhat reassuring. She crept ever closer to me on her hands. Seeing her gazing up at me like that made my heart skip a beat. And I already knew very well how her sweet aroma could excite me so. Yeah, I want you too. 
主人様にいっぱいご奉仕してあげますね Having gotten close enough to be able to, she gave me a hug. Hey, no need to force yourself. I don't mean that kind of forcing yourself. Besides, you're not even that small. I wouldn't lie about something like this. I suppose if you were to compare her to other white girls, she wouldn't be all that big in a relative sense. Well, they aren't big, but they aren't small either. They are pretty standard, especially for a slender girl like her. But for a Japanese person, she was more than adequate enough. Mind you, that was only based on my own completely subjective standards. I wouldn't quite say that myself. Besides, there's plenty more parts of you which are in line with my preferences. Christ, what an embarrassing thing to say out loud. I was totally red in the face, not like that mattered right now, though. I'll try not to lose myself in you. Smiling bashfully at each other, our faces drew nearer and our lips pressed together. Then. What? And cut! I'll see you in a second. Okay, let's have a look at Didi's second extra scene. Today I enjoyed my long awaited date with Didi. Michiru would usually come with us, and a lot of times we'll bump into someone we know when we go out. Well, that may be fun, it's a lot more fun when it's just the two of us together. We lost track of time. Next thing we knew, the sun was setting. We are back! You're very welcome. I empty my arms of the bags I've been carrying when we get to Didi's room. It's filled with the dolls prizes from the arcade. Well, they're not heavy, they are bulky. I'm just glad you like them. Honestly, I think I got too many. I put my hand on my chin as I view my handiwork. This is what happens when I get overexcited from seeing DD happy. We would have been toast if the shopkeep hadn't given us bags for them. Army lizards? Didi smiles as she takes the stuffed animals and figures out of the bag. Now that she's lining them up, it makes it clearer that I want too much. I sigh again. Today? So it changes from day to day? Oh, I get you. Although in my case, it's science books and manga. Looks like you really enjoyed yourself. I'm glad to hear that. Alright then. Let's shift gears and finish summer homework, shall we? I know how you feel, but you gotta press on. We haven't wasted a second of our summer vacation, but Didi and I haven't really worked on our homework. One excuse for that is I needed to explain my relationship with Didi to both our parents. Another would be that we needed to cheer Michiru up so we would play and go to the summer festival together. Not to mention the favors I had piled up, I had to tend to Makoto and the rest. There are a lot of reasons, but that doesn't mean that we don't have time for homework. You know, we should just get everyone together. It'll be more fun that way, don't you think? That is the number one cliché you should avoid right now. 
I know I plan to get everyone together tomorrow, but I should get a little work in after dinner. Of course. As fluent as Didi's Japanese is, it's unfair to assume that she can get by without studying. Sure, you can leave that one to me. That might as well be all of them. I'll help as much as I can. Will you help me with English in exchange? Didi as a teacher, eh? That could work. Alright, I'm counting on you tomorrow. You're British enough, especially during tea time. <laughs> That's not what I meant. It's getting late, so I'll pass. You must be tired from all the walking today, Didi. You should get some rest. Didi says as she sits down, right next to me. So close, we are rubbing shoulders. Lately, Didi's been sitting like this even when we play video games. I get excited when she does. I can't see up her skirt, but I don't count it as a loss. I would love to see her underwear and situations where I can steal a peek sends a rush of blood through me. But consider. The sight of her bosom from the side, the way her soft arm would sometimes squish against mine. How'd you know? Nah, <laughs> that makes sense. You promised before the date that you wouldn't be a maid today? Oh, it's embarrassing when she says it out loud. My feet feel light from being so happy. I can't tell what you are thinking and I'm your boyfriend. That? You stopped in front of the stall and stared at it. Anyone could tell. I got it for her, of course. My treat. I was deliberating whether or not it would be a good idea to use that lottery money today. Really now? I don't think it would be anything weird by the way she's saying it. Didi smiles, then points towards my lower body. How, may I ask, did you reach that conclusion? Oh, bugger! It was me what grasped on me. Yes, I was. I'm sorry. Isn't that different? Just from holding hands? Didi lets out an embarrassed giggle and puts her hand on my lap. Hey! I didn't have the slightest intention of doing this five seconds ago, but now the buds of lust are beginning to sprout. She glides her hand along my lap and thigh, exciting me further. Her hand glides and eventually settles on my crotch. Now? There was no way I could decline Didi's invitation. Wow! And cut! A 
Okay then, I guess that's all for DD's route. And next time on Chrono Clock, we're gonna start Crow's route. Thanks for watching everyone, and have a nice day. Bye bye.